just came out there in the last hour in regards to uh, Dundalk. And um, I'm just going to go into an article that was posted on the Irish Mirror by Mark McCadden. And uh, it's from Stephen McGuinness, who's the, um, I think he's the chairman, no, he's the president of uh, the PFAI. Um, he came out and said uh, he was speaking at the FAI AGM in Slogan on Saturday when he, he was speaking about... Um, Dundalk and obviously their financial situation is talk, there's a lot of talk that they could go bust and he said uh, one the work done by the league office in the last couple of weeks is greatly appreciated uh, it's 12 years since we've had a club go out of business and 7 years since we had a pay issue which was Bray Ronder so we've had a really good time in the League of Ireland in my time 15 years in it the first number of years were difficult the issue we see right now Dundalk is that personally uh, I personally think the club within the next couple of weeks, could go out of business and it's a serious, serious problem. I look around and some people seem to think it's going to be saved, but I don't see that. At this moment in time, there are no wages for the players next week. I've written to the board. I wrote to Tony Keown, FAI chairman, last week and I acknowledge his response uh, to come and meet. But with the horse bolted at this stage, some of the things that we need to fix here, and I've put the things in writing to the board that it's that the ownership test isn't robust enough. We need to designate a unit in the finance department to look at how the finances of our clubs are managed in uh, the Northern Ireland Football League up the north. They have a separate company to look after this. At some point, we need to get owners to put money into an escrow, at least 50% of the players' salaries to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Just to give a background, the players at this club on average earn the national living wage. There's nobody here on a €100,000 contract. I think it is incumbent on the current board to have an independent inquiry into how the club has gotten into this trouble and to ensure it doesn't happen again. Obviously, Brian Ainscoff has come out during the week uh, and explained that uh, there is real trouble there. And John Fallon in the last hour for the Irish Examiner. I'm just trying to get that. Excuse me. <coughs> um. <coughs> Hopefully this uh, will give us access. I'm not sure it will. Um, yeah, it's a full article there. Dundalk and last chance saloon as tables. Uh, chaos looms. It's understandable. Brian, Brian Aaronkoff's efforts to offload his, I mean, uh, offload his ownership and with a cash flow of crisis are floundering with a consortium led by fellow US businessman Jeff Saunders withdrawing their interest over the weekend. Dundalk face a critical 24 hours to avoid being trading ceased. Trading being ceased with their potential withdrawal from the league having consequences in the race for the for the title and European spots. It's understand that Brian Ainscott's efforts to unload his ownership amid a cash flow crisis are floundering, with a consortium led by uh, US-based businessman Jeff Saunders withdrawing their interest over the weekend. The club were forced to release a statement on Sunday night when a message on a bogus account referred to closure. And uh, they said, we're fully aware of the rumours and false information that is circling on social media. It's, our owner is in discussions with different groups domestically and overseas. The next 24 hours is a critical time for the club and we hope that we can get a deal done that keeps us going forward. We'll keep everyone updated with any developments. Meetings on Monday morning will confirm either impeding receivership or a last dish rescue. A third straight defeat at Waterford on Friday left John Daly's side bottom. Uh, of the table with six games left but uh, the club could be wound up before Saturday's trip to Sligo Rovers if that's the case of like was there 30 results being expunged uh, one immediate repercussion is Derry, Le Derry, C Derry City leapfrogging leader Shelburne into the top spot by a point other potential buyers have been hovering uh, but the mounting deaths arising from Ainscoff's takeover last December have left the only option of survival and entrance into the uh, SCARP small company administrative rescue process uh, that's a 49 day salvage scheme established in 2021 for insolvent companies uh, similar to examinership but specifically for entities with 60 or fewer staff uh, Dublin born Ainscoff acknowledged the financial difficulties last Monday confirming delayed payment of wages to players and endeavouring to ensure the club can complete the campaign due to end on November 1st when facing loud neighbours, Drogheda United. Um, so yeah, look, as, you, as I said there, uh, it's worrying, worrying times for Dundalk Football Club. The fact that the club could go out of business um, 
it's really sad considering you look back at 2015 and they were in the Europa League under Stephen Kenny. Stephen Kenny then became the Ireland manager. And uh, after that, of course, so he went to the under 21s. But because of that run, because of those, so many of those iconic players that you think of in within the League of Ireland, Sean Gannon, Dane Massey, Gary Rogers, um, David Mac, uh, Macmillan. Uh, there's a lot of players there. You, you, Kieran Kilduff. You know, you think of that team. Um, Robbie Benson. I could go on, but you know what I mean. Um, you know, this Andy Boyle. Who went on to play for uh, Preston afterwards um, and stuff like that. So there's a lot of history there with Dundalk Football Club, as we all know um, as well. And for them to go out of business would be a disaster for Irish football, um, considering people will be talking about you know Dundalk and their run back then and the fact that they're out of business. It would be a terrible, terrible look on Irish football if Dundalk are to go out of business. If the reports are true, and it seems like it are, because there's a lot of people coming out, uh, really reliable journalists uh, who are worried about the situation now. And it's just not a nice situation to read about and hear about, especially if like, we cover the League of Ireland and we're at games a lot. Um, and the fans of Dundalk are brilliant. They're passionate. They get behind their team. You know, it's a, it's a town that's built on a football club like that. And when the, when the cl team is doing well, the club is bouncing as well. So it's really, really sad to hear uh, that they're going through these issues at the moment. And you'd hope that somebody can come along and rescue them and that they still have a functioning club going forward because um, nobody wants to see that. Well, there might be rival fans and stuff like that, but for the greater good of the League of Ireland and for clubs, we don't want to see clubs dying and going out of business. And that's what looks like is going to happen here. And players' contracts and, uh, you know, there's people going to lose jobs if that's the case. And people have to laugh about that. Then you want to get your head checked uh, because it's just really not a nice situation to see anybody in. So I'm hoping, praying uh, that we can get something sorted regarding the uh, the ownership there of Dundalk Football Club and that they can, you know, save the debt because, as I said, there's a lot of good people who support the club, a lot of good people um, up around Dundalk itself and for a club like that, which has so much history um, to be going through such a crisis right now, is it's really, really sad and it's really hard, hard, hard to hear about and listen to those situations like that. So... Yeah, I don't know how to feel about it other than to be sad uh, for the club. And, you know, you, you, tomorrow's going to be telling in terms of what's going to happen to Dundalk Football Club. So, from me anyway here at the channel, channel that I hope to God that someone can come in and, uh, and help the club going forward. Um,